Hello, everybody, and welcome to this introduction to Code Exchange session. So I would like to cover what is Code Exchange and how specifically can you use it. It's a really powerful tool, and I'm, I'm sure that you definitely like the next 10 minutes. At first, a bit about myself. I'm Flo Pachinger. I'm a developer advocate at Cisco DevNet. So I have a software and band, uh, networking background there, and I'm based in Frankfurt in Germany. I, my focus is uh, IoT, so I'm focusing more on IoT projects, network programmability, and AI ML. Now, let's get started. And I'm sure you browsed around maybe on developercisco.com. If you don't have it, haven't done it yet, then definitely please do so. Um, and maybe you started also some projects, so or like you went into the more programmability world. So maybe you did one or two learning labs, uh, you touched up on a code already, um, or maybe you're a guru already. But uh, in either way, basically, you will come to one thing, and this would be an empty editor. So when you start your projects, when you start uh, your, with, with your programming uh, journey, uh, or you're directly in there, you need to start somewhere. And usually you open your editor and your notepad uh, here with uh, code and you basically say, okay, now how do I start? Or I can start with the learning lab, of course, but what is there maybe already some code out there, you know, uh, which, which can help us. And I have a good news for you. Yes, there is. And let's cover here a bit more some, some, uh, some projects there, or like uh, some, some, some challenges what we have. So there is tons of code out there, as, as you know, so uh, you can find it online, you, you can on, on GitHub, on other repositories, on, on websites, uh, but how do you di differentiate this code from that code? I mean, you can see this here now, these are different programming language, it's used in a different way, but how do you know the quality? And how do you know what, what's, uh, what you code can you use? So let's start with some points here. So it's difficult to find the right source code. So usually uh, there are tons of um, ways you can go as a developer, uh, but basically uh, what is the right source code for this specific API, for this specific product, for example. And there needs to be an increase of the visibility what you have like for, for good projects. So basically if um, we are definite, we are creating some really cool um, project or like coding project, then you definitely would like to find this one. Also, it's um, very important to find um, uh, the authentic source repo versus like classic some, some weekend projects. I mean, you can go through the code, you can see the documentation there, right? Um, you can think I can use it or not, but maybe it would be cool like from the beginning on you can filter, you have on one screen all the source code there. And more importantly, as well, to build a community around the open source project. Because basically, as you can imagine or remember for sure, it's all about the community together, how you actually build um, a good software project. And we achieved this with the DevNet code exchange. You can find this on developer.cisco.com slash code exchange. And now I would like to dive into the code exchange. And here we are. Here you can see developercisco.com website and right here at this button, you can just click on code exchange and there you go. What, what can you do here? So basically you have a library of code what you can use. It's documented, you can already see some examples there and I would like to go right into a classic one which is DNA Center, DNAC. So I just Google or in this way I search it, uh, DNAC and then you can see in a way, the boxes here. And each of these boxes is a repository, what you can use. You can sort it, your search entries, uh, according to programming languages. You can also sort it or filter it with technology-wise. And since we already have it here already with Python DNA C top five, I will actually go with this one here. So now we go to the repository page and now you can see here more information on this specific repository. So first of all, who is the owner on the right side here? Who are the contributors? What, can, what are the categories, for example, and programming languages? And then you already see a documentation of, of this repository. So you can see here, this is one Python script there. 
And what does it do? So it shows basically all the network devices um, um, of the inventory in the Cisco DNA center. Then you see interfaces device, device licenses, and so on. And now, how do you access those scripts? So all these code scripts or like all these code repositories are basically linked to, to GitHub. And GitHub is this big open source community where you can host for free open source or projects. So for example, like this one, you can see here all the Python scripts there as well, and also the documentation, what you see below there. So if you would like to know more, or if you would like to know and see the source code, how did they actually get all the devices or the network devices of the inventory in the Cisco DNA center, we just click here on the Python code. And there we go. You can see here how actually would you or would or did here the Cisco expert basically do in order to get all the IP addresses, all the of the network devices in the Cisco DNA center. So you basically have here the definitions there, and then here again, okay, how do you actually receive it? And you can use this code. You can use this code in your editor uh, immediately. You can just grab it, you can copy it, you can clone it, for example. And of course, you can also make additions to it. And this is the uh, basically the whole open source community aspect there, where you basically see that in a Cisco, in a so sorry, in a GitHub repository, that you can add suggestions for new code, for for example, for additions. What what you think um, are, is good is good to have here. Then let's go back to another example. So when we go to the Cisco Code Exchange, we go back, and now maybe let's explore more of the repositories here. So for example, we can uh, check uh, maybe some more Meraki code, or maybe there is some you would like to deal, uh, check more or work with the Meraki API. So when we click on the um, product category Meraki, you can already see all the, the repositories which are actually in the category Meraki. So I would also check the first one here, some automation scripts. So if I click here as well, I can see again all the information there, uh, what kind of Python scripts are in there, the description. I can see the languages as well. And of course, what, uh, what are the license? So it is, this is the MIT license. It's an open source license, what you can use here. And there you go. So how do you do this? Again, we open a GitHub. We can see all the Python scripts there, which are available. And basically, on the description below, so here in the read again, you can actually see, all right, let's go again for the client count. So script to count the total unique client MAC addresses here. So basically, if we scroll up here again, we go to the client count, we go to the PI, so to the Python script, and there we go. You see that it's all documented. You can see, okay, how did they do this? What kind of API keys um, do you like need to um, um, copy in there or not? Uh, what kind of classes are there? What kind of definitions? So basically, it's all as well up to you how you can how you can use the script. So you can grab it, modify it, use it for your own, and definitely work a work around with the Meraki API. Last but not least. Uh, there is one thing that um, you may be wondering. So this is the Cisco Code Exchange, but who is actually writing the scripts there, or who is actually like contributing to this whole library? And this is the cool thing about the co community aspect there. It is partners, it is customers, Cisco employees. It doesn't matter because you, when you have a GitHub account, can submit one of these like, uh, repositories or even more. So here on the right corner, you can see the submit button. So when you have an account, a definite account, which you get for free, you can click here on the submit button and you can submit your own project there. So basically you can select here the Git repository URL. You can select the technologies area there. Um, of course, do you have the permission? Are you a Cisco employee? And then you submit the project there. Here are some requirements you definitely need to fulfill, but it's not a big one. So it's more about the, what licenses do you use? Um, and one thing, it, this won't get published immediately. 
So our engineering team is, is definitely testing the code. So there won't be some malicious code or some uh, some not working or broken code. So in the Cisco code exchange entry, we definitely check for a quality code that it is the code is right documented, that it works, and of course that you can use it. So with that being said, I hope you really enjoyed the sneak peek of the code exchange uh, se session here, and I wish you a happy, happy DevNet create. Thank you very much.